This week's guest is Robin Witten. She's the editor and founder of Audiophile Magazine, and I'm so happy that we've been able to get together for this uh, Writers of the Future podcast. So um, thank you very much, Robin, for being on the show. Oh, it's been fun talking with you, John. Yeah, and I just got to get this in right now. This is the very first issue of Audiophile Magazine, which has come a long way since it's first published in June of 1992, but we had three of our, our first audiobooks that were covered in there. And so uh, it's, I've been enamored with Audiophile ever since that, that uh, auspicious day so many years ago. Anyway, um, what we were talking about, and I think which people are going to um, enjoy, is um, the transition of audiobook from being book on tape to actually now being one of the, the, the biggest growing aspects of the publishing industry. So a little bit about that, please. Well, we, we did a lot of talking about uh, where audiobooks started and the kind of milestones uh, that occurred during uh, the 20th century from cassettes to CDs to digital downloads and mm -hmm. the way um, all of those formats have made it so much easier for listeners to enjoy their audiobooks. Absolutely. And we also discussed the value of uh, an author getting their work made into audiobooks. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, just uh, there are really uh, very good ways for an author to get their audiobook made these days in uh, on sort of do-it-yourself platforms, uh, but at varying levels of getting professional help in that in that project, uh, which we recommend because we talked about how it's a lot harder to actually. Uh, narrate your own audiobook than it might seem uh, that <clears throat> at first to an author, but that, you know, there are so many more audiobooks being made. Um, what did we say? A hundred times as many audiobooks in less than a decade. So from 7,100 uh, audiobooks a year to 71,000 audiobooks a year. That's amazing growth, amazing growth, which a lot has been done because of the work you've done with Audiophile Magazine. So, how does somebody, because I read every issue, I've been reading every issue for I don't know how many years now. Um, so how does somebody discover Audiophile Magazine? Well, we have, uh, obviously we have a very active website, audiophilemagazine.com, where you can browse our reviews and recommendations, sign up for our free newsletters, which come out weekly. Um, we also are still in print for anyone who likes the print format, the slow motion uh, version of, of reading reviews, which is kind of interesting. We have a lot of profiles of narrators and authors. Um, and we also have a podcast where uh, behind the mic with Audiophile Magazine, where every day we just talk about one audiobook, recommend it, play a little clip and, you know, tell you why you might want to listen to it which is great. And they should definitely make sure to listen to this podcast interview with you. So thank you very much, Robin. It's been, it's been great. Great. Thanks, John.